There's been this topic circulating all over the internet recently called lucky girl syndrome. I don't know if you've seen it. It's definitely been all over TikTok, like it's crazy, but I'm into it. Even though the concepts behind lucky girl syndrome is nothing new, it's a fresh take on very old but important ideas. So let's talk about lucky girl syndrome and how you can be a lucky girl too. Hello friends, welcome back, happy to see you. If you're new here, my name's Jills and I help women step into their power, embrace their womanhood and transform their lives. So if that's something you wanna do, you should subscribe and stick around. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what lucky girl syndrome is, why it works and how to have it. Again, I've seen this topic everywhere lately. You're gonna listen to what I'm about to say because this is gonna change your fucking life. Lucky girl syndrome is a way to justify to your brain why everything you want always works out in your favor because you have this syndrome, you can't help it. I've been using this to manifest everything that I have in my life. As opposed to if you were like, oh, I'm so unlucky, nobody likes me, you know, I had the worst luck in the world. And like, it literally it works. Does. Everything like, just works out. Things are always working out for me. So if you're going to say, I am lucky, things are always happening for me. If it doesn't go the exact way that I want it to go, then something better comes up after. Like, why not try it? We're floating on a rock, just give it a shot. But I think this is one of the best trends to come from the internet recently, so I am here for it. So the lucky girl syndrome in its simplest form is that you just believe you are the luckiest girl ever, and so it comes true. You just believe wholeheartedly that you are lucky, that things are always working out for you, that the universe is always conspiring in your favor. And it's essentially the law of assumption, assuming good things will happen to you, so they do. Again, it's not really a new concept, but it's probably one of the most important mindset shifts you can have. And this works, think about it. How would you think differently? How would you act differently if you actually thought with full certainty that everything was always working out for you, that you are just a lucky girl, that amazing experiences are always coming into your life? You would start seeing the world differently and you would start living your life differently. And this this is not just manifestation woo woo kind of stuff. Like there's actually real science behind this. So we have something in our brain called the reticular activating system or RAS for short. And it basically serves as a filter for us. And stick with me on this because it's actually very interesting. We live in a world where there is so much stuff being thrown at us constantly. You know, information, sights, sounds, smells, experiences. There's just so much going on around us that we can't possibly take it all in. Our conscious minds cannot handle that. It's literally impossible. So the RAS is super important for us. It acts as a filter for us. You know, think about it as like basically the lens you view the world through. One of its jobs is to figure out what you should be focusing on. So it helps us to see what we want to see and to notice what we feel like we need to notice. That's why there's this saying, you might've heard it before. Once you decide you want to buy a red car, you start seeing red cars everywhere. Or that's why the mom can sleep soundly while a really loud plane flies over her house but the minute her baby whimpers just a little bit, she's awake. That's why you can spot the creepy man in your peripheral vision over there, even though there's so much else going on around you because your subconscious knows, hey, you know, this might be something to notice over here. We teach our brains what to notice and what to ignore. And it does a very good job at doing this for us. So when you tell yourself and really believe, nothing ever works out for me. I'm so unlucky. Everything is always a struggle. My life is terrible. You are priming your brain and your RAS to start noticing and looking for all the things that are terrible, all the things that aren't working out in your life, all the things that suck and that you don't want. Or you might even start subconsciously creating these negative situations and experiences in your life. The RAS is meant to seek and validate your pre-existing beliefs. So if your pre-existing beliefs are negative, then your RAS will be searching very hard for more negative things in your life. But the amazing thing is, is that when you tell it the opposite, I am so freaking lucky. I always get what I want. Of course I get what I want. Everything always works out for me. I am so blessed. Your RAS starts identifying and noticing all of the good. You start to become aware of all of the little moments working in your favor and you start seeing and creating opportunities where good things can come into your life. So if you want to take advantage of this part of your brain and have it work for you, not against you and have lucky girl syndrome, then you have to start telling yourself over and over and over, 
I am a lucky girl. Everything is always working out for me, no matter what it seems right now. I can't wait to see what lucky things come into my life today. You have to choose to believe these thoughts. You have to start convincing yourself that you are the luckiest girl alive. And this is a mindset I decided to take on a few years ago, not necessarily that I was lucky, but more so that things were always working out for me. And my husband does this too now. And all the time, you know, if we're like stressing about something, we'll just be like, eh, it's fine. Everything is always working out for us. And it does. This happened on our way back from vacation last week. We ended up traveling home on that day where all the planes shut down all morning, at least in the United States. And it was kind of crazy, you know, at the airport, everyone was stressing. It was even more complicated because there's no direct flights from where we were to go home and you have to do a connecting. And there was only one spot left out of the entire airport, every single plane to get back to Nashville that day. But like I said, there were two of us, the other connected in some random city somewhere. And then you'd have to stay the night there and then fly home the next day. So Cole booked me on the flight that gets home that same day and he booked himself on the flight that stays in that random city overnight and comes back the next day. Obviously not ideal, a little annoying, but we were at the check-in counter together and we looked at each other and we were like, it's okay, things always work out for us. Anyway, lo and behold, at the very last minute, one more single spot opened on my plane and he was able to get on with me and everything was fine, it all worked out. That's just a little example, something that I noticed last week, but things like this happen all the time. And I've noticed for myself personally that the better my mindset gets, the more wonderful things come into my life and the easier life gets. And my husband notices the exact same thing. When he has a more positive mindset, his work is more successful, Successful, it's easier, he feels healthier, because how you think is everything. But there's also more to luck than just this. There's a professor, his name's Richard Weissman, and he's actually one of the only people to really study the science of luck. And his research is really interesting and actually kind of validates everything I've been saying. So he has a book called The Luck Factor, which I haven't read, but I did read his research and listen to several interviews with him. And he says that there are four big reasons why some people tend to be lucky in life and others aren't so lucky. So I wanna talk about what those four reasons are so you can start being luckier too. So according to him, the first big differentiating factor between lucky and unlucky people is that lucky people tend to notice, create, and act on opportunities. So this is kind of similar to what I was saying that if you're priming your brain toward more positivity, you're more likely to notice positive opportunities and make the most out of them. Now, the reality is, is that sometimes things don't come into our life the way we expect them to. And sometimes we receive the biggest blessings in the most unexpected ways. And when we are more open to different opportunities, we allow space for these blessings to come in and to be surprised in lucky ways. For example, if you think about lucky times you've experienced in the past, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they're totally random and things that you could never predict. So there's this sense of openness, flexibility, and receptivity that lucky people have that unlucky people don't. And this allows them to really make the most of things and see new opportunities. And this makes sense because think about it. When you think that everything's always working out for you, when you think that you're always lucky, you're just not going to be as stressed out as much. You're going to have more of that unbothered energy and you'll naturally become more open and receptive. You know, when you feel like everything's always working out for you, you won't feel like you need to hold such a tight grip on your life to prevent it from crumbling and falling apart. So while those character traits of openness and receptivity can lead to more luck in your life, choosing to believe that you will experience lucky things will cause you to naturally embody more of those traits. So it works both ways. So Weissman did a little study. It was only two people, so very tiny, but very interesting, where he left some money on the sidewalk and he had someone who claimed to be really lucky walk by. And he also had someone who claimed to be really unlucky walk by. The lucky person immediately noticed the money and picked it up. The unlucky person did not. She totally missed it. And yes, that's a very small study, but he's recreated this in other experiments that show that people who are lucky tend to notice more of these random opportunities where unlucky people are less likely to notice it. Another differentiating factor between lucky and unlucky people, according to Wiseman, is that lucky people are more likely to follow their intuition and listen to their gut, AKA they're more likely to pick up on and listen and hear those subconscious just feelings and pings that we get when something is wrong or when something is right. So because of this, he believes, and I believe as well, that these people are more likely to get out of bad relationships faster. They're
they're more likely to quickly avoid unhealthy situations, or they're more likely to follow a path that's good for them, even though it doesn't make 100% logical sense. Since these people are more intuitive and listen to their guts, they're more likely to listen to those alarm bells going off telling them that something is wrong, whereas unlucky people second guess themselves. They don't fully trust themselves. The third differentiating factor Weisman states between lucky and unlucky people is that lucky people expect good things to happen to them, which is basically what I was talking about the whole beginning of this video, law of assumption. And lucky people are generally more optimistic and have higher expectations for their life. So basically this is again, pretty much manifestation and law of assumption, but in more scientific terms, it's also called the self-fulfilling prophecy. Now the self-fulfilling prophecy has been studied over and over and over again, and it's basically where your thoughts help to dictate a certain outcome. If you think you're gonna fail a test, it's more likely you will. If you read your horoscope for the day and it says your day is gonna be terrible, it's more likely that you'll have a terrible day. But this works on other people too, it's not just ourselves. There's a really classic study on this and I'll keep it short, but basically researchers told teachers that there were five kids in their class who did really well on their testing and they were super high performers. In reality, they weren't, there were no tests. They just made it up and lied and just picked five kids at random. Well, at the end of the year, those five kids who were high performers actually outperformed the other students because the teachers thought they were smart. So they treated them that way and they became it. You can see this in relationships too. Sometimes if you expect your partner to be amazing and loving and generous, they're more likely to be that. If you expect your partner to be incompetent and a lazy loser, they're more likely to turn into that. Anyway, law of assumption, self-fulfilling prophecies are very powerful. Our beliefs are very powerful. And to a large extent, they dictate our reality. And last Weissman says the fourth difference between lucky and unlucky people is that lucky people are generally more resilient. Now, it doesn't matter how lucky you are, we will all face some sort of challenges or failure in our life. But someone who tends to be luckier is able to one, bounce back from these moments with more ease. Two, they're more likely to actually learn from these challenges so they're better off in the long run. And three, they're more likely to see the good in negative situations. Let me give you a fake but extreme scenario. Let's say you get shot in the chest, but it just barely misses your heart by like a millimeter, right? And so you live. A lucky, optimistic, resilient person will think, oh my goodness, I lived. I'm so grateful. I'm so lucky. The unlucky person will think, I got shot. This is terrible. Why is this kind of stuff always happening to me? My life is terrible. One scenario, two different reactions, but you know that person number one is going to heal so much faster and be so much better off in the future. Person number one is able to see the silver linings in things. No Notice luck when it does happen and not just completely dwell on the negative. Lucky people keep going. And again, just because someone is lucky, it doesn't mean they won't ever have challenges, but they're able to get back up again, know that good things are still coming to them and be optimistic about it. So lucky girl syndrome is not just for that one special girl who was born on a magical day where all the stars aligned for them. Of course, there is still a small element of chance to things in our life, but I think chance and random luck is just a teeny tiny piece of the pie, whereas it's really our mindsets and beliefs that run the show, which means that lucky girl syndrome can be available to everyone. I hope this video was enlightening for you. Be sure to give it a like, share it with a friend, share your thoughts in a comment down below. It all really helps me out and I'd love to hear from you. So if you like this video on lucky girl syndrome, you'll probably also really like this video, how to become the woman of your dreams. It's a very popular video of mine and for good reason. So I hope you go check it out. So I will see you over there or I'll just see you next time. Bye.